get by It resides between my eyes Walked through the fire Came out better on the other side See life's like a peach If you find the sand And right now I'm feeling like a hundred grand You are listening to Inspired Insider With your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise Dr. Jeremy Weiss here. I'm founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders like the founders of P90X, Atari, and many more. Today, I'm very excited. We have Paul Culligan. He's founder of the Podcast Report. He's been podcasting for 10 years and consults many top podcasts, including Brendan Burchard's The Charged Life, Dan Cashel, who's both a personal friend of both of us, Growth to Freedom, Joe Polish's I Love Marketing, and many more. In addition, he's helped numerous authors launch their books to top 10 at Amazon, and he's been the secret weapon behind millions of views on YouTube. Paul, thanks for joining me. Hey, thanks for having me. Uh, that's a good intro. I should copy that. Yeah, feel free. And you know, this thanks. is part of the Pro Podcaster series where we're going to talk about the behind the scenes of how podcasters outsource and automate workflow. And I can't think of a better person to talk about. You spoke at last year's podcast movement. Um, You can have your own podcast. You consult on many top podcasts. What's some of the the advice you gave maybe Joe or Dan or Brendan when they they first started uh, working with you and talking with you about podcasts? Well, every one of them, the initial theme was, what are we trying to accomplish here? Yeah. A lot of people flip on the microphone, um, upload the file somewhere, and wonder where their million dollars is. And uh, th- that, that, I mean, that doesn't just happen work. right away? No. Um, and so the question was, what, what are we trying to do here? Yeah. Um, and in some cases, it's, you know, I'm trying to create a, a backlog of evergreen content that the world can learn from. Great. Let's, let's do that. Um, I want to rush the charts so I can be number one on all of iTunes. Okay. You know, that's what we did with Brendan. Let's, let's do that. Um, Dan's trying to transfer his radio show to, to get the real audience, which is podcasters. Okay, let's do that. And uh, so the very first thing is, what are we trying to accomplish here? Yeah. And I've turned away as many podcasting clients as I've taken on because okay. the expectation, the, the desire of what they want to get out of this just isn't real. And that's no fun for anybody. Yeah. So talk about that for a second. You don't have to name names or anything, but what was some of the reasons why you turned someone away? What were their expectations? Well, 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 some expectations, you know, oh, because um, people you know, out there I probably have those same expectations. That's why you speak. Yeah, to them a little yeah, bit. yeah. Well, there's this idea that that one of my favorites is this idea that you're going to do a really obscure niche show and suddenly everybody in the niche is going to go to iTunes that day and search for your show and find you and subscribe and buy. You know, I've heard people with niches smaller than 5000 convinced that if they podcast on iTunes, they'll have 10,000 downloads at the first episode. You know, it's just a math thing. And so, you you know, or they think, well, I'm going to do a uh, one-minute podcast that's going to get them to pay $997 for my training program or that type of thing, the entire flip side of it. And they just have unrealistic expectations of what's going on based on on a lot of things. And you and I chat a little bit before we went live with this. um, There's a lot of bad information out there. And there's a lot of excitement out there. And the idea of of, of flipping on a microphone and broadcasting the world is invigorating. It's intoxicating. I understand where it comes from. But it has to be based on reality. It has to be based on strategy. Yeah. So what are some of the biggest myths you see are out there? Well, well, you, you know, there, there's a ton of them. I mean, number one, uh, um, I'll tell you one of the most damaging myths out there yeah. is people search for podcasts. Okay. That percentage of the world searches for podcasts. We don't, as a society, search anymore. Yeah. We get recommendations from friends. You know, um, right now, the number one recommendation for kids for music, you know, is it Spotify? Is it Pandora? Is it you? No, it's still friends. Okay, And so this idea that I'm going to wake up one morning and go, oh, is there a podcast about this really obscure topic? It's not going to happen. So what people do is they spend all this time optimizing and SEO and all this stuff for people who are going to find them by search. And that's not how people come. People come three ways. Here's how they come. Number one, they come because you tell them it's an option. I'm working, believe it or not, with a grocery store in eastern uh, eastern part of the country who is podcasting to their clients, their customers, really? about deals and sales every morning. And they're telling them at the store – oops, sorry about that. The microphone just went wonky on me there. I'm going to have some funky audio there for a second. There we go. Um, my, the hand's all over the place. Um, 
they, they tell their customers at the store to subscribe to the podcast. Perfect on point. You, you know, so they... I, when, That's when really launched, interesting. Yeah. When we launched Brendan to number one, number one in all of iTunes, we were accused of cheating. We were accused of doing a whole bunch of things. What we did was, was we just took Brendan, we took Brendan's email list of people who know, like, and trust Brendan, and we said, hey, we've got a podcast. Right. Here's how you subscribe. Right. And it's funny, you know, I've I've gotten a bit of a I've gotten a bit of a of a reputation for being a podcast rainmaker, and it's funny because people will say, um, you, you know, can you do for Brendan what you did for me? And unfortunately, what happens is if you have a they, huge list. Yes, I can. Right. Well, what, 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 what the thing is, I've seen people with massive lists who easily could have been number one, who weren't because the message wasn't subscribe on iTunes. The message was come out to my website. Again, what, it is, what is it that you're trying to do? So, number one, they come from you telling them, be it the clerk at the grocery store yeah. to an email list from an international best-selling author. Yeah. Then, number two, they come from other podcasts in the industry, people who already have the religion. Yeah. By the way, this is why I'm doing your show. Right. There yeah. are a lot of people who have no idea who I am who know who you are. You know, yeah. and they're going to hear about me on the show, and a number of them are going to drop over the podcast report. Awesome. Yeah. Cool thing is, you know that I'm going to, when this thing goes live, I'm going to tell my audience, and you're going to get a couple of people from my audience. That's the number two way. Yeah. The number three way is that they stumble across it. On occasion, you'll get somebody from Search. On occasion, you'll get somebody from a new and notable or a highlight. I had one customer who was, uh, who was uh, highlighted at the homepage of iTunes. You know, you turn on iTunes. It's a good place bam, to be. His podcast was number one. He did well with that, and he was able to keep number. He was, he was able to keep well with that. It was a really well positioned podcast. You know, so don't poo poo it. But the strategy is right. tell the people who already like it that you exist. Right. Number two, work with like minded people. Then number three, deal with search and that kind of thing. Yeah. So, what are some other ways, Paul? People are using podcasts in interesting ways like the grocery store like what are some other examples of clients that's i would have never thought of that in a million years i never would have i never would have either and and boy I, we could do a whole episode about what's happening with these guys it's fascinating stuff we're, we're still dealing with it and i'll give you a clue yeah, we're yeah. talking to lawyers um uh, one of my favorite stories one of the earliest stories in podcasting yeah. uh, grammar girl mignon fogarty uh, mignon one of the best she is one of my absolute favorite people in podcasting she got a book contract like seven or eight episodes into her five-minute show. God bless her. And then she got a call from Oprah, Oprah's team, not Oprah directly, saying, we want you to be on the show. And she has to call her agent and say, you know that thing where you get a book and then you go on Oprah? Here's the problem. I don't have the book, but I'm going on Oprah on Monday. You know. And by the way, um, this is the last call because I got to go to you know get makeup and clothes and that kind of stuff. And her editor took her podcast took the existing episode of the podcast, chopped it up, made an audio book, and put it on iTunes. And it was the number one audio book for like three months after her appearance on Oprah. And Oprah never pushed it, never mentioned it. So the thing is, people are making podcasts only for podcasts, right. but then they're making it for audio books that they're selling otherwise. Dan Class, a stand-up comic, he does CDs of his podcasts. Those sell. Um, we've got podcasters who've done books by, by podcasting, training courses, Mark Marin, who has, I think, 800,000 episodes by now. You know, what Mark Marin does is the last 30 are free, then he got to pay to get in the archives. Right. There's this idea that we make a podcast once, only for podcasters, and then we even date it, and then it's dead by the end of the next week. That's why we have to come out with the next episode. Bad idea. Yeah. Bad idea. You make content that is delivered by podcast among other places, then you can do a bunch of other things. Yeah. We were talking before we started, which was interesting, you know, that a lot of people may count on sponsorships or things like that. And you were saying, which, you know, that it actually requires some work and to produce your own products. So what, else, what do you recommend? So you recommend obviously the books, CDs, what other things are people doing that, that seem to be working that do require some work? Well, well, one of my one of my riffs in podcasting is the only problem with new media is when you treat it like old media. Okay, if your marketing strategy is to record something, broadcast it to the masses, and put a mass commercial on it, yeah. you're probably at this point still better with radio. Really, honestly, um, 
if you take an audience that's you know this small and then you know project ads that have to have a lot of people it's it's just not going to work so what you do is this is the process it's the 4Ms this is the 4Ms of podcasting number 1 what's your market okay who's your podcast for and if your podcast is for everybody it's for nobody i'll tell you that right now right what's your market the better it's defined people call it the avatar people call it a bunch of things what's your market Number two, what's the message? Where are you going to tell the market? I've had yeah. people who have said, you know, I'm going to sh- I'm going to do a show specifically for, you know, entrepreneurs is a big topic, as you well know. But you know, but then it's just, oh, I'm going to talk about all things entrepreneur. You know, you go into processes, you go into steps. You, you know, you've got a very specific message to the entrepreneur. What's your market? What's your message? Then what's the money? What's the money to that group? And that group that could be either, in some cases, hey. If I've got a show for brain surgeons, you know, then an ad to brain surgeons when the average purchase of a piece of equipment might be a couple hundred thousand dollars, you only have to sell one or two, at, you know, to be at a good place. Right. Joe Polish, um, one of my customers, he has a $25,000 a year mastermind that people stay in an average for two and a half years. And that number keeps going up because we're getting more years on the mastermind. Yeah. And the fact of the matter is Joe sells one mastermind on a show, his take is about $60,000 where he sells 1,000 downloads of an Audible ad and his take is 20 bucks. You know, we did the math. He has to be able to sell like one mastermind for every like 3.6 million downloads or something like that. If right. you can't sell a mastermind for every 3.6 million downloads, yeah. you know, he doesn't have a $25,000 mastermind. So market, message, yeah. money, then the media. What's the media that does this the best? Now, I love podcasting yeah. because it lets people consume any type, any place, anywhere. Yeah. I love the model that you've got of the video plus the audio because if somebody wants to watch me wave my hands and knock over the microphone, they can do that. You know, but if somebody just wants to listen to the car, they can do that as well. So you, you, you know, you, you've thought through that intelligently. But other forms of media could be transcripts. I know people poo-poo transcripts because transcripts are expensive to get done, a buck a minute, that type of thing. But some people want to consume it that way. Yeah. Some people want to consume it edited transcripts. So you've got to bring an editor into it. Yeah. Some people want to consume it on CD. Some people want to know your content but don't know what a podcast is. Yeah. You know, my, my dear mother to this day believes that she can't listen to my show because she doesn't have an apple. Okay? Okay. I went over to her house. Her Kindle Fire has um, iHeartRadio app on it. I go, Mom, why do you have the iHeartRadio app? Well, because the radio told me to, you know. And there's a lot of people doing that. I go, Mom, you know, I'm on that app. You're on the radio, son? No, 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 it's a podcast. No, this is the iHeartRadio app. It's only (laughs) radio, son. You know, and no, you know, and finally, yes, Mom, I'm on the radio. You know, and the fact of the matter is, um, so we've got content that goes out that way. Our mutual friend, Dan, Dan does the radio show, plus he distributes it by podcast. Yeah. So what is the media that makes sense? And this is part of why I've come to people and I've said, you know, podcasting doesn't make sense for you. Yeah. You know, and that's okay. Market, message, money, media. Yeah. Those are the four steps. Yeah. Well, can and you once re- you figure that out, then it's easy. Then it's easy. Yeah. yeah. Can you remember, Paul, a case where someone was gung-ho and you just told them it's not podcast is not a fit for you. Yeah, um, had a local specialist who wanted to market a very specific niche who could only leverage the people who had listened to it locally. Okay, and what I said was, I said, look, you know, let's do this. I mean, in your industry, there's got to be like lead generation and this kind of stuff. Have them call the office. If you can serve them, great, serve them. If you can't serve them, sell the lead. You know, and and sell the lead ethically. Don't don't you know? Don't do anything annoying. But you know, sell it to people that you know, people in the industry who are good to this. And she didn't want to go down that path. She just wanted to have this podcast for the world, have people call in, and then be able to reject ninety nine point nine percent of them. And by the way, if you have a business where you ask people to call in without telling them that there's a big chance of rejection and then you reject 99.9% of it, that's a really bad idea. Right. So what would happen is, I mean, if I was, and, and she was great and her niche was perfect and her service was there, but if I had listened to that show and I called her office excited, you know, a call to action, the epitome of what you want in podcasting, and she goes, yeah, I'm sorry, I can't serve you. I would be so frustrated. Right, right. You know, and I would go to iTunes and I would give a one star review because I go, hey guys, buyer beware. You know, she's not really there for you like she claims to be. Right. And um so so we had to say no. I said either either no or or call me back when when we get a when we get a stream to figure this out. Yeah. Now, now, 
could she take the tech of podcasting and produce a CD set so that anybody who comes by your office, it's, it's the type of industry where um, uh, there's a lot of uh, um, um, learning that has to happen before you acquire her services, if you will. Okay. So if we took that podcast information and we did a CD set and everybody comes by and says, I'm interested in you, and you give them the 10 CDs yeah, and they yeah. go, oh, about it, that could be awesome. And we suggested that, and her big thing was now. Like an answer. onboarding. Yeah, 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 exactly. So, you know, that's one where she knew who her market was. She knew what the message was. She knew what the money was, but she made a really bad media choice. Yeah, yeah. So, well, tell me about your conscious decision. You chose the podcast report for what made you choose that, and then the format of the solo you talking about as opposed to interview. I think you've done some interviews also. Um, so how did you come to that as a because you could I mean you've been in the internet since I think I was listening nineteen ninety three or whatever it was. So you could pretty much have started. I have a, a sh- book on that. I have a book on that shelf over there called The Beginner's Guide. You can see my screens that hide the mess. Uh, but I have a book on that shelf called The Beginner's Guide to the Internet that is about this thick and it actually came before the web. And there's like two paragraphs in the book that chat about this thing coming to the web and it might make a big difference in the internet. Right. And um, so yeah, I've, I've been doing this for a while. Yeah. Um, I have been in podcasting since day one. A large chunk of it was producing other people's shows and yeah. the content and other shows. And I realized from just a, a concept and, and perception point, you know, I mean, if you hire a podcaster who doesn't podcast, you know, there's something there. So I needed to get a show out the door. Right. So I realized, podcast report. Okay, let's go through the process. Who's my market? Podcasters. Okay? Yeah, yeah. What's the What's the message? Be strategic. Okay? Now, well, where's the money? Tools, services. A lot of times I'll have podcaster X will go, hey, I can't take on this client. Let me forward this to you. And then there are a lot of people who listen to the show to figure out what it is that I'm I'm about, and, and I'll get hired that way. And then the the last thing that happens though is is what's the media? Now in this particular case, of course it's a podcast. You know, it's a podcast about podcasting by a podcaster. Of course it's a podcaster. <laughs> but right. you got to think this through now. I have podcasters who spend a great deal of their life listening to podcasts. There's no room for me to do an hour and a half show. I got to do a show. It's like 12 minutes. Everyone's like 12 minutes, right? Exactly. And I do that on purpose because podcasters are busy. You know, podcasters are listening to podcasts all the time and I want to be there. But here's the cool thing. You know, you talk, chat about how I I spoke at podcast movement last year. I missed the year before that. And and I really did miss it. I'm actually missing this year's too. I've got a, got a client event that I, that that I have to go to, but I was listening to audio from um, uh, different podcasters who were at podcast movement number one. And uh, Dave Jackson from the School of Podcasting was yeah. one of my heroes. I yeah, you guys, Dave. you had a good interview on there, yeah. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Uh, Dave's a great guy. And Dave does this thing called The Last Five and Five. And, you know, everybody has their list of the top podcasts for entrepreneurs or the top podcasts for this or that. Dave's question is, no, no, no. What are the top? Not what are the best. What are the last five that you listen to? Right, right. Because that's what counts. All the counts what you, you actually listen to. Yeah. Exactly. So, so Dave does that. So I, I had read in the notes that Dave was grabbing Ju Ma- Lou Mangello, who, who's one of my absolute favorites. And um, I'm like, what's Lou listening to? Like, Lou's, I love Lou. So I, you know, you know, you know, I get to the podcast, I listen to it, and they set it up, and they set up who Lou is, and Lou goes, all right, last five. Well, of course, I don't miss Paul's show. You know, and I wasn't even honestly, I wasn't looking for that. I mean, I was ecstatic and I did a happy dance and all week long. Lou listens to me, Lou listens to me. And um, there's, you know, a couple of weeks ago, Tom Webster from Edison Research, another one of my absolute heroes in this space, you know, sent out a tweet a couple of weeks ago Hey, Paul, love the last episode. Wow. And I do that because it's about 10 to 12 minutes. If I ranted and raved for an hour and a half about my fitness goals and that type of thing, they wouldn't listen. They wouldn't consume. Right. And I know my audience. And if, if you know, if you're making money ranting and raving about something perfect, but but market podcasters, yeah. message, got to be strategic, got to do that. Money, products, services, consulting, yeah. media, podcast, short, yeah, short. So, Paul, talk a little bit about what someone comes to you. What kind of things do you do for them? Um, depends what they come to be for. You know, I do hourly consulting. If people just want to kind of bounce things off their head, um, um, I can do that. I can point people in the right direction. Yeah. Um, but you have some and, cool done-for-you services, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and, and I have some done-for-you services. And, and we'll do everything from 
Um, some people have a hard time with the idea of like, what is podcasting? How does it work? What does it look like? So we do what we call the pilot. And the pilot is, we'll produce episode one of your show. We'll set everything up. We'll figure out everything. We'll do the audio. We'll do the graphics, the whole nine yards. You can have an episode up at iTunes. You can see what it looks like. You can go to your audience. You can go, hey, do you want more of these? I mean, the true pilot format. Yeah. Um, and the neat thing there is in the pilot format, we'll set it up the way we believe it needs to be set up. Right. And so if somebody does a pilot and they want to go forward, then they can go with a done with you service. And a done with you service is they record the content, they drop it into some sort of cloud-based syncing folder. 99% of my customers use Dropbox. I've got one customer who uses Google Drive, but you know my job here is to make things easy for people, not complicated. So the one who wants Google Drive gets Google Drive. I'm sure at some point I'll get a customer who wants to use you know, the Microsoft cloud service and we'll, we'll make that happen as well. Right. Um, they drop the media file in there. Um, my grocery store customer drops the media file in there. They fill out a form online with the details. And the form is usually like, what's the most important topic to make sure we get that in editing? Tell us about any major gaffes or issues. You know, at 12.45, a um, fire alarm went off and I left the studio for 15 minutes. Please cut that out. You know, right. that kind of thing. And then how to spell people's names and that kind of thing. And then we make a podcast come out the other side. And there's different versions. Some people totally want us to handle absolutely everything. Yeah. Some people, okay, I need my social media team to handle the social part yeah. or... You know, I've got one client who has a recording studio. Um, he does a CD of the month. And so obviously he doesn't need me to record anything. You, you know, he has a studio get that to me. And so it's all dependent on there. So we'll do the pilot, we'll do the setup, and we'll do, do the done with you service. Um, a little trick that I do, and it's, it's, it's purely a psychological game, is I charge you the same amount every month regardless of how many episodes you get out the door. And what happens is then my customers don't skip a week. You know, if, if, if I charge really? you per that's, episode. That's uh, unheard of, yeah. Well, the thing is, if I charge you per episode, it's Tuesday, and you're tired, ah, skip this week. I don't have to pay for it anyway. But if you're paying for it, you know what happens? Episode gets out the door. Right. And um, so, so, and it's a retainer contract. And, and if it's the type of week where if they publish every Wednesday and in the month of June, they get five out instead of, you know, four, no problem. You know, we cover the cost and we go from there. So they know exactly what the cost is. They know exactly what the process is. We have agreements set up where how many days in advance they need to get things out. And uh, we go from there. But the, but the big thing is, is people should be doing what they're good at. Yeah. I, there's an episode you talk, and I, I encourage people to oh. go to the podcast report because you have an episode on this, and I love your take on this because this is sort of what, you know, I'm going to include what we're talking about in my talk at Podcast Movement, and oh, it's exactly what you're saying, your, your view on this. So, yeah, speak to a little bit about you should be doing what you're good at and what you like doing. Yeah, well, I mean, you just kind of summed it up, yeah. you know, and especially the higher level you are, um, when you are doing what it is that you're good at, you love it. Yeah. You know, you know, you know Tim Ferriss, 4-Hour Workweek, it's so funny, everybody kind of just missed the point of the 4-Hour Workweek. The 4-Hour Workweek is the average person, about four hours a week is at the top of their game. Everything else is maintenance, you know, and the thing is, if you're great at content, you should be making content, not yeah, editing. Yeah. If you're great at editing, you should be editing, not making content. If you're great at writing, you shouldn't be podcasting. If you're great at podcasting, maybe you shouldn't be writing. And yeah. so the whole idea is just sign this off and give this to somebody who's good at it. Now, yeah. if you want me to train your team, we do that. You know, we can do that remotely. I can fly out to your place, obviously funds and whatnot, you, you know, appropriately. Um, or, you know, I had one one client, one one coming client who said one likes to utilize the overhead that one already has and like yep makes sense you know you know let's do this right. but that person again her job is not to edit the stuff her job is not to figure out what's going on her job is is to produce the content and you see the average podcaster their job is figure out what they're going to talk about talk about it edit it publish it, make sure it's published all the places, start all the social media, do the show notes. You know, if you're doing the transcript, it becomes, a, it becomes a terrible, terrible mess. If your job is once a week, flip on the microphone, chat about the content at hand, and then hand it off to somebody else, then you're at a really, really good place. For sure. You know, I mentioned Joe Paul was $25,000 a year mastermind. How much time should Joe Paul be spending editing his episodes? The right. answer is not. Right, right. You know, and even for Joe, um, the way he produces his shows, um, he can't 
Um, he interviews a lot of people. And he doesn't even necessarily know what episode it is that he's recording. He doesn't need to. <laughs> you know, he needs to produce the high level content. Right. And so just do what you're good at. And that's not a call to hire me. Yeah. That's a call to just do yeah. what you're good at. Now, we're good at other things. And we've got systems and processes in place. But um, just do what you're good at. Because once you do that, the game changes. We yeah. all know that. There's been days when we've been on fire and we're done and we don't need to sleep and we don't need to eat crap food anymore because we're, we're like in our game. And then there's weeks where the entire week is made up of us doing – you know, it's not that we're above manual labor. It's just that when we do the stuff that we're not designed to do, yeah. we're not at the top of our game. So yeah, let's be at the top sure. of our game. And we, we uh, don't look forward to it. You know, yeah. like I know in the beginning, I, I did all that. I mean, I would record it, edit it, put it up. And it's like, then you just don't look forward to doing the next one because you know how much exactly. work it's going to be. Exactly. Um, so right now, as, as, yeah. as we do this, my editor is working on this week's episode that's going to go out in about like an hour. Yeah. yeah. You know, and if I had to worry about that today, you know, now I can create content twice. You know, and she's editing this episode. You or whoever you've got is going to be editing this episode. Yeah. I'm just making content. So I kind of yeah. try to live by it. Yeah. So talk about the team that you have in place. What, uh, you know, because obviously it's not just you behind a, a screen doing everything. What, because um, someone comes on, they get a full done for you. Um, what kind of team do you have and what, what are they doing? Well, when we do pilot, when we do setup, it's it's me at the beginning because we, we've got to set this up um, yeah. correctly and and intelligently. The high level stuff. Yeah. yeah, the high level stuff. Like what's the show purpose of the show, that kind of thing. And um, you need someone on the high level to set things up correctly. You know, right now I've got a client um, has ordered a, a 21 episode series that is going to be going to, when this is done, they're going to be going to a, um, a, a crowdfunding campaign, which should be pretty fantastic. Mm. We're spending probably three weeks on episode one to get the groove mm. then once the groove's done then episodes two through 21 are going to be really really easy you know what the music what the cutout time that right. kind of thing so a lot usually, of time up front yeah, yeah so i usually set everything up and then at that point i have systems and processes in place yeah. that i have a number of people who can do it so it might go to this person it might go to this person it might go to this person i've got some people who like working on on a particular client or a particular show and it'll go there but the whole point is if person x isn't there person y can take over right you know i know on your show you ask people what their favorite books are um one of my favorite books is the e-myth and uh, the myth revisited specifically, and it's funny, for the longest time, I thought it was about electronics, I thought it was about the internet age. It's actually the entrepreneur myth. It's an incredible book. The heart of it was written back in the 70s, um, back at a podcast event, uh, back when it was Podcast Expo. Um, I said, hey, there's this great new book about podcasting, and I, I had quotes from the book, and everybody's like, he gets me, he gets me, he gets me, and it was really funny because the book was 20 years old. And, and the whole idea is you put processes into place. Right. You know, if the fry cook at McDonald's can't show up, you know, the right. other fry cook can show up and make the fries. Right. You know, and that's the, the system that, that, that I've got built in, in, in internally. You know, one of the reasons why I have my clients fill out the form is because, you know, I, I can't trust somebody. Well, I can't trust somebody. It's just the hiring process and the expense. You don't want to risk it. Yeah. Well, you don't want to risk it. And, and, you know, let's make the person who did the audio file make sure they get everybody's name spelled correctly instead of paying someone to go to Google and triple check and make sure it's there. Yeah. So, you, you know, I've got three or four different people who, th who do three or four different things at, at any given time. During the summer, I've, I've been known to hire a couple of high school students, a couple of college students, that, that kind of thing. And, um, you, you know, but, but it's all based on that. And then so yeah. we use the system. Um, I use Trello internally mm. and uh, stuff goes under Trello board. Yeah. And when it goes under the Trello board, then people take it as assigned and, and, and go from there. And there have been times when... Um, you know, the crux of things, there have been times where I've grabbed a thing here and there off the board, but I grab things that I want to do, you know, the podcast that I want to deal with. Right. It's really fun to be paid to produce a show that you would be listening to anyway. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Write that down, everybody. If you can ever get paid to produce a show that you'd be listening to, um, that's the win-win. You get it early, you get paid for listening to it. It's awesome. So the so it goes from the Trello board. Talk about some of the steps it has to go through on the well, Trello board. Well, I mean, I mean let's, let's be logical here. It's got to be edited for content. Yeah. You know, and this is anything from, you know, delays at the beginning to the fire alarm to take out this part, add this part, that kind of thing. Editing for content, my clients tend to be 
uh, single take types who, who tend to get it all done. Yeah. And so it's not usually big chunks. 99% of the time when they fill out the form, the form says no gaps or I had a coughing fit at about minute 10, that kind of thing. <laughs> right. um, it gets edited. Now I've got one client. We're taking some stuff from the archives and we're basically doing about the first 20 minutes for free. I uh, give a name and email address to get the rest. You know, that, that has to go in. So the first thing is right. editing for content. Right. But editing for content is really easy to do. Um, if you have someone quasi intelligent doing it who doesn't have to worry about the other things. Yeah. Once it's edited for content, then you mix it up with the music, the ads, the the voiceovers, that kind of stuff. Um, so content, mix, and then the optimization for for the web. Um, a lot of people, boy, here's one big clue. Um, MP3 is a miracle of modern technology and it's wonderful and it's changed my life. I owe the Fraunhofer guys big, but MP3 is a terrible way to edit audio. MP3 is the final project, not the initial thing. Yeah, yeah. So, so you edit it up, you mix it up, then you optimize it for the streaming experience. That's everything from a good MP3 encode to leveling to equalizing to tagging to album art and that type of thing. Right. Once that's done, then it goes to publishing systems. I'm a big fan of A, what works, <laughs> but B, I look like George Bush there. That, that's interesting. <laughs> Uh, for those of you who watch the video, you know what I'm talking about. For those of you who are on the audio, no idea. Um, I'm a big fan of, of what works. For me, I have found that Libsyn works incredibly. Yeah. Um, I love monthly services that are required to stay with the times or else you don't pay them. Um, Libsyn works great for me, but here's the thing. When things change, Libsyn's on it, and I absolutely love that. Yeah. So right now, at the time of recording, every single client's on Libsyn because it just makes sense. Yeah. Um, we could go to other systems. And, and then we have computers to time things. You know, I know people, I, I feel so sad. I know people who will get up at 6 o'clock in the morning to publish a podcast. No, we have computers that do that. You, you, you know, I, I know people that will interrupt their lunch to, to send out a quick tweet. No, no, no. We have computers that do that. Right. And so then once you get the system in place, you're good to go. So on the Trello board, one of the things I do is, is when a project comes in, I could take my iPhone. Which I got in front of me here. Yeah. I can take the iPhone. I can pull up an, auto, an an automation that I have. I can type in the episode number, and I can type in the date that it's due. And then every single step of getting that process is shot over to the Trello board that my team takes a look at. Hmm. So I can I can assign management to my team in line at the movie theater to go see the new Captain America. Wow. You know, and and that's the beauty of of a connected world. You know. Yeah. Um, that's the beauty of what we have. And then everything gets followed. Then the cool thing, Trello board, I can go in. Where are we at? Do I need to jump in? And it happens less and less all the time. But if it does, I'm, 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 I'm there. I think the next step is probably hiring somebody to manage the Trello board. Yeah. No. So, I mean, Paul, one of your big expertise is all this work and energy and time goes in. Then it gets published. And you're also really good at the promotional side of things. So talk about some of the systems with getting the word and spreading, you know, spreading the word uh, on the podcast or, you know, you publish on a lot of different channels. Last episode, I chatted about this pretty significantly, and you can put that one in the show notes. I can't even remember. I think it's episode 96. I, I talked about how podcasting has a, um, oh gosh, I can't remember the term now. Um, Podcasting has a oh this is just embarrassing now I got to look it up I'm going to take a quick let's break look it up here. right now yeah the oh. discoverability problem discoverability there we go yeah. that's the issue so so um it used to be in media what we do is is we'd sit in front of the television set and we'd flip channels boop, 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 boop. we'd find something we like we'd watch it um or we'd go to the bookstore we'd go to the science fiction center uh, section and then we'd take a look at what we want and we'd find a book that looks interesting in the library or we'd go to the record store and we'd flip through uh, records and we'd listen to it or the radio we'd turn the channel we used to find things we used to discover things we don't anymore right is there 7000 channels <laughs> well, well exactly yeah. you know and and so so but but we don't there's no way and there's not even a mechanism to flip through it anymore so what happens is and it goes back to what we said at the beginning of this interview where we absolutely have to um you know know how they're going to find us and the deal is that they aren't going to find us we have to find them okay and, and this is part of what makes podcasting so cool um once they subscribe i don't have to tell them Right. Because the next episode automatically comes their device. Next episode automatically comes their device. That's one of the big things about subscribe. And um, so what I'll do is I will be all over social. This idea that people read every tweet we ever post and every Facebook you know thing we ever post is just ridiculous. Right. And so so you post to the social networks on a regular basis. Um, 
you know, what's going on, what the benefits are. What, what's really funny is, you know, if, if I were to say episode 97 is really good, what's in it for me? You know, if I say something snarky, like, you know, if you believe people are going to find your podcast, you probably believe in Santa too. And then I've got an image of an evil Santa. And then I've got a link to the podcastreport.com forward slash 96, whatever episode it was. You're much more likely to look at that. And and so the thing is, I will market to social media on a regular basis. I have a weekly email newsletter that comes up called Heads Up Tuesday. Comes out, guess what day? Tuesday. Tuesday. And um, oftentimes I'll, I'll link to the episode and I will go from there. But it's funny, you know, every day I will go through, ah, let, let, let's do a quick, let's see if I'm still hooked up to Twitter here. This this could be fun. Um, you know, so I'm, I'm looking at Twitter right now. Oh, good. I'm, I'm logged in. And so I'm looking at notifications here. Okay. Um, 36 minutes ago, Tara retweeted the fact that I have a iPad app about how to podcast. I have been putting that tweet on Twitter for six months. It, you know, different versions of it rotated. Right. Not too much to make people barf, but enough, you know. And today, <laughs> Tara just found it. Right. You know, um, yesterday, Annette Lilly liked my tweet, podcasting is easy, here's how to do it, grabthebook.com. You know, um, and... You know, Ryan Maddox on the 25th said, sharing your mind in a podcast takes far less time than sharing your thoughts in a blog post and link to my, my things. So we have these systems w where things go out automatically and publish in a way that doesn't turn people down, uh, turn people away, but, but lets them know what's going on. Interesting little tidbits, you know, ser Google search right now does tweets. Really? So if there's I didn't topic, know that. Yeah. yeah. If there's a topic in the news, um, number six or seven, especially in mobile, um, if there's a lot about it, we'll do tweets about it. So um, you get tweets from the outside and you get this type of thing. And I will get people who are like, hey, I just found you. You know, I'm nearly 100 episodes into this, people. I've been doing this for for almost two years. Yet you get people who just nearly find me because of, of, of Twitter. So the thing is, you know, people who follow me, A, aren't listening to everything. But here's the cool thing. Tara, who retweeted me uh, from a thing that I've been doing for six months. You know, Tara here has 362 followers. You know, and she's a horse trainer, wine lover, digital marketing person extraordinaire. So here's Tara, who is marketing the world, her digital marketing skills, and she retweets my message from six months ago out to the world. Now, if I got up this morning and said, what's my marketing strategy for Tara? That might be, you know, a, a, a bit too focused. But if it's a social media marketing strategy, we're good to go. Yeah. Now, flip side, other things I do to market. This episode... You know, you've got a good following. You've been doing this for a while. This episode's going to get a lot of people to go back to the back history. And when I say something specific like, I really try to make episodes that don't date themselves, now people go, oh, I can go listen to the show. You know, and so you'd be, you be strategic about it. Yeah. Just the fact, now, now, now you've got a show with a good audience, but, you know, even if you had a show with a lousy audience um, that's been around for a while, now the fact of the matter is Google still associates you with business and podcasting and the link to my stuff. You know, I've done podcasts, I'll be honest with you. I've done podcasts where I expect maybe eight people to watch it, but I've done it solely for the Google juice. Yeah. And, and I've done it solely for the practicing. For sure. You know? There's a big SEO factor there. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Especially if a site's been around for a while. Exactly. So, Paul, And you... it's not SEO of people looking for podcasts. It's an SEO of people looking for specific information. Oh, look, there's a podcast, there's a play button. And that's mm -hmm. why somebody might Google for your topic and then might click a play button, and then at the end of the podcast, the guy goes, hey, by the way, you can subscribe to this, and it comes to your phone every week. I didn't know that. Well, how do I subscribe? Well, it's called thepodcastreport.com forward slash subscribe, and then that's the cycle you begin to play. So you also wrote the book, How to Podcast 2016. Yeah. So what's some popular excerpts from that that people really enjoy? You have, you have a copy of that? Let's see if I have a copy around here. Um. That book, it's funny. I, I never wanted to be the how to podcast guy. I never wanted to be the how to podcast guy. Um, because A, there's there's 8 trillion videos out there on, on YouTube. There's a whole bunch of opinions. There's a whole bunch of articles. I just didn't want to get in that mess. Right. The problem was, well, actually, Joe Polish. Um, I'll blame it on Joe. When Joe puts you on stage and in the audience is Tony Robbins, Peter Diamandis, Steve Forbes, right. Ariana Huffington. And Joe says, if you want to know how to podcast, Paul is your guy. And then somebody comes up and says, do you have a book? The answer is, yes, I do. 
you have. <laughs> so um, um, the book came out. So so I wrote out a podcast. What's funny was it's not that complicated. Um, the book itself, four steps. Make digital media, which we're doing right now on Skype. Yeah. Put it online. Make it podcast ready. Tell the world. Okay, that's it. I gave my entire process for everything. It's really just the first 57 pages of the book. And then I knew that if I put up a 57-page book, I'd get reviews on Amazon. Too short. You know, um, I actually took the book. I took the 2015 book. I updated it entirely for 2016. Yeah. And I got a review from somebody who said, you know, it's just the 2015 version updated, you know, even though on the front it says, you know, updated for, for 2016. <laughs> and, and the funny thing was the guy in Amazon, he gave the 2015 version a five-star review, but the 2016 version, it got one. So anyway, I knew that if I had a 57-page book, I'd get too short. So I took mm -hmm. some interviews. I took some guest authors. I took some guest writers, and they are, are the rest of the book, yeah. and they round it out, and it's a good experience. But honestly, the 57 pages are perfect. And at the right event that I go to, um, a lot of times I will produce how to podcast um, year special edition, which is just those 57 pages. And the thing is, you know, if I stand in front of an audience and go, podcasting is the perfect encapsulation of the RSS schema that allows for enclosures of, you know, media files encoded with the Fraunhof, or, you know, people's minds just want to explode. What the heck does that mean? I don't want to be part of this. But then I go, you know that podcasting thing? Yeah. It's not that hard. Make digital media. Well, you can already do that. Put it online. You mean like our website? Make it podcast ready. Oh, oh how, how do you do that? And I mentioned earlier, big fan of Libsyn. And then uh, number four, tell the world. And uh, we got some advice and some ideas there. Um, I've had people successfully launch a podcast with nothing other than the book. If you go to the Facebook page for the book, there's a lot of people who post, hey, my podcast is out the door. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah. You know, and, um, and it's awesome. And, and it's, it's a lot of fun. And uh, so it's, it's fun in Kindle. You can um, – here's the thing that's really odd. Um, I sell about five times as many of the paperback books as I do the Kindle books, which really? I never would have guessed. That, that yeah, weird. I would have guessed a, a, a digital thing like that would be mostly Why do digital. you think? Um, I think people want something they can mark up. I, yeah. I think people want something that they can, they can scratch physical, and, yeah. and stuff. Take on a plane, that kind of thing. And it's funny because the digital version is usually $2.99 and the paperback version is usually $14.95. And so, oh well. Um, maybe I should increase the price of the Kindle. <laughs> but when you do Kindle, what's interesting right. is Amazon has a thing where um, um, when you highlight something in Amazon, you can have a thing where Amazon will show you other people and what they've highlighted and the ones that get highlighted mm -hmm. a lot. And what's really interesting is it's not the profound stuff in the book that gets highlighted. It's just the real basic yeah. stuff. Well, yeah, like what's that, something that surprised you from this one? Um, um, well, one of the questions you asked, the primary source of podcast listeners is your existing audience. Yeah. That, one, that one with a bullet is, is always number one. And then, and then any of the four-step processes. You know, I'll say something simple like, you know, a good microphone is 90% of the process. Soundproofing is everything else. People are like, oh, I just need to get a good microphone. Yay. You know, people just want the simple stuff. Right. A lot of times right. people will wander line Libsyn and, you know, I do a coupon code thing in there. But, you know, I know a lot of people don't use that, you know, and, and that's fine. But it's really just the simple stuff. Um, I, one time I quoted um, – um, um, oh, of course, now I'm getting it wrong. Um, Dan Benjamin and uh, Merlin Mann from the Back to Work show that I absolutely adore. Um, um, Merlin said something once, like, people come for the content, they stay for the personality. You know, and I did that one. That one gets highlighted a lot. But just the real, real, real basic stuff, which just leads me to it's a necessary book. Yeah. I'll tell you, I had a meeting. I have to be careful here not to – make it so easy that people can do the math, but I, I had a meeting with some podcast experts, okay? And I brought them each a copy of the book. And these are podcast ex experts. Right. And um, I brought them a copy of the book, and then um, on Monday, I got an email from the guy going, oh, the book is amazing. I read it a bunch of times. Dog here, it took a bunch of notes. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you're a podcasting expert. You, you know, and part of it is just the simplicity of the Yeah, we forget the foundation, the foundational yeah. things. Like, oh, by the way, like you said, promote it to your audience and send them the subscribe button. I have people with a list of 150,000 people who kind of go, how do I let my audience know? <laughs> well, you know, you take that list, the grocery store, you know, how do we let our customers know? Well, you know, and um, it's, it's, it's really not that complicated. Yeah. Yeah. Love that. Um, so what has changed from 2015 to now? Like what'd you have to revise? 
Uh, tools and automation. Yeah. So what are some uh, of the tools? I know you talked about Trello. You talked about Libsyn. What other tools or automation do you recommend? You know, um, um, a Phonic, which, which, which I chat about in the book, um, that has changed the game. Um, the precursor to that, the Levelator has changed the game. Um, what's, what's, what's funny is it's really all the automation systems. Like, like Libsyn's been around forever. And um, I haven't always used Libsyn. In the early days, they had a they had a fascinating history. So Libsyn's been around forever, but Libsyn now, for instance, integrates with Dropbox. Okay, hmm. and and what's beautiful is now, um, um, two of my editors do all their work on Chromebooks. Okay, hmm. and they never use a hard drive to download the file because the file gets edited, gets tagged, and gets sent to Dropbox, and it never gets downloaded to their system. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah, so so the cloud is is what makes a lot of these things possible. So the customer records in the cloud, it gets edited, you know, on on a Mac system using Audacity. By the way, I'm still using Audacity. Yeah. Uh, um, it gets edited on Audacity, but from that point on, all the management of it and the tagging of that stuff all happens in the cloud. Um, many times on on Chromebooks purchased for you know about 150 dollars as refurbs, you know, and so it's it's it, it's pretty fabulous. So the the, the cloud. Has, has what made it so much easier. So now, you know, the client records and instead of sending me an FTP file or trying to attach to media or here's the login and password, bam, it's in the cloud, it's done. Yeah. And then I have a system that tags me when the new episode's been recorded. I've got one client who uses uh, Uber Conference, the, uh, the the telephone system. Yeah, yeah. They pay, they pay the $10 a month fee to get their own number and every time they record... I've got a trigger set up that basically, once we get the email from Uber Conference that they record, sets up a trigger and a bunch of things. So the cloud, huge. Automation, things like If This Then That and yeah. Zapier. And uh, Microsoft's got their new tool. I haven't been able to play with it, but that looks really, really interesting. And um, now you just set up these flows and you set up these logic and, and, and you go from there. So I do a lot of things, surprisingly, um, automated by computers. Yeah. Yeah. People think are done by hand, but the, the set the, You just set it up. Part. The set it up has to be done initially, has to be done correctly. Yeah. But then once that's done, you know, you're know, you a machine. You know, I had one client who, um, notorious for being late. and we know, um, You don't have any of those, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. And, and we now have it that if we don't get the file by a certain time, he gets the email that says, hey, you're late. And, yeah. um, you know, and then I got a text from this morning going, hey, I didn't get your email. You know, and <laughs> hey, it's not my email. You, you know, right, and right. Um, so, so you've trained automation, the now. cloud, yeah. off base systems, all this stuff is there. So it's funny, the same Audacity that I've been editing with, the same Levelator that's been doing my leveling, the same Libsyn, the same WordPress, the same, but the automation is just out of control. Yeah, yeah. So, Paul, you know, you mentioned mic is important. What other big mistakes do people make with their podcast? You know, like having a crappy mic, like what else do you see as are big things that people should pay attention to? Well, the big thing is, is they don't know why they're doing this. Yeah. And then they don't get results. And then they're surprised, which is always the one that I'm, I'm, I'm really curious about. Well, let's just turn on a microphone, record a bunch of stuff and see what happens. That's a recipe for disaster. It doesn't matter who you are. Right. It doesn't matter who you are. So they go into this. And it was funny. In the early days, I would get people who would call me and would say, hey, Paul, I just bought a high definition you know, video camera. Back then, that used to be expensive. Now they're on our phones. And um, hey, Paul, I just bought a high-definition video camera. What should I podcast about? You know, talk about fire aim ready. I mean, it's absolutely ridiculous. So people, you know, well, I'm going to do an interview podcast. Well, who are you going to interview? Well, I don't know. Well, there are people who can get you interviewees, but boy, that's a, that's that's another expense. And 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 boy, if you're doing a daily interview show, which is really really popular, getting 365 guests is pretty much a full time job. Um, work, yeah. you know, you know, have you thought about this process? Have, have, have you done this kind of thing? And so what happens is, is they get this idea that, okay, I do seven days a week. I get it automated. You, you know, I do this, I do this, and I'm good to go. And they're not the right things. You know, I had a, not a client, but um, someone looked me straight in the eye and go, Paul, these three things are really important. And they're not. You know, and um, I don't want to go into specifics, but there's just, there's a lot of bad Information, there. Yeah, yeah. You know, you know, I don't, I don't want to point fingers at folk, but basically, they had spent this time, this energy, this effort on doing things that simply didn't matter, and so they took a lot of cycles and took a lot of time. And um, so, what happens is, is you get a decent mic. You know, I love the the Nessie by Blue. It's it's like eighty dollars at any right. given day on yeah. on Amazon. You're good to go if you want to put 
you could put two pillows um, in in the back of your microphone, and you could deal with like ninety percent of the echoing issues. You know, it, you know, if you really want to get rid of the echoing issues, just put a blanket over your head when you record. <laughs> you, you know, you look like an idiot, but it's. Um, the, the, I'll the try BBC, that next time. It's what the BBC war correspondents used to do. You, you know, it's good enough for the BBC. It's right. definitely good enough for us. Right. And um, you know, but just what are you trying to do? And it goes back to at the beginning of this interview: the market, yeah, the message, the money, the media. Yeah. You know, I'm just going to talk to people about stuff. A lot of people talking about stuff. Yeah. You know, I'm going to help entrepreneurs systemize and automatize their business so that they can charge their clients more at the end of the week. Interesting. Yeah. You know, I'm going to help brain surgeons figure out how to, um, you know, be the on-call brain surgeon who still has a family. Interesting. Yeah. You know, yeah. I'm I'm going to interview the greatest minds in marketing, Joe Polish. You know, help them take it home and and give them a marketing degree they couldn't get any other ways. Awesome. You know, but what is it that you're trying to do? It's not a technical issue. It's not Libsyn versus Blueberry versus SoundCloud. You know, it's not microphone condenser mic versus diaphragm large mic versus whatever. Mm -hmm. It's what are you doing this for? Why are you yeah. doing this? What do you need to happen? And I'll give you a clue. You know how many episodes you need to get an episode out? One. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Paul, I appreciate your time, and I have one last question. Please. But before I ask it, where should we point people towards? They should go to the podcastreport.com. Where else, yep. where else can they um, check the you out? The podcastreport.com and paulcolligan.com are probably the best, too. Okay. You, you know, you know, blogging's fascinating. You know, I have the blog, and I have the fancy theme and all that stuff. But what, what's interesting is um, media is pushed now. You know, asking people to come to us is just becoming sillier and sillier. So, you, you know, if you go to paulcolligan.com forward slash Twitter, that's my Twitter account. You go to paulcolligan.com forward slash Facebook, that's my Facebook account. Probably the best way to get a hold of me, honestly, is in the push situations. Once you go to Facebook and you follow me, you know, you're going you're gonna to get the important updates. Once you go to Twitter, you follow me, you're going to get the important yeah. updates. Yeah. If you want to pick up the, uh, the book, there's a registration in the book, you know, where I send out a weekly email update um, and what goes on there. But it's, it, it's you know... You know, you know, these days asking where the best thing to go online is kind of like, well, where can I find more about Lady Gaga online? You, you know, it's like, well, iTunes for the music, YouTube for the videos, yeah. you know, T Fury for the T-shirts. You know, just, just go all the logical places. Right. I right. wish you could say something cool like Google the name Paul, um, and I'll pop, you know, I'll pop up number one in Google. But uh, Paul Colligan, it's not well, that hard. The podcast report too. They'll find all the podcast the report. Information. The podcast report's interesting. The, uh, the I'll, I'll give you a little, uh, I'll give you a little uh, insider yeah. peek. Coming up to episode 100 soon. Um, not quite sure what I'm going to do, but I'll tell you this. iTunes search. So my show is called The Podcast Report. The, you know how many, ep you know how many podcasts with the word the in it? No. A lot. You know how many episodes with the word podcast in it? <laughs> A lot. And how many with the words report in it? A lot. So if you type in the podcast report um, in search, um, mine comes up eventually, but not that high. You type in Paul Colligan and it's absolutely fine. So um, yeah, there Paul might Colligan. Be, yeah, yeah, yeah. Paul Colligan's fine, but a there might be a rebranding effort for the show coming um, around episode one hundred and one. I type I'll in the Paul podcast report and you come up first for me. Maybe it's because well, I good. did the site. But... Good, good. Yeah, I'm glad. I was talking to iTunes search, um, internet. Yeah. Oh, I got you. I got you. Um, so, Paul, your proudest moment, considering your podcast career, what's been one of the proudest moments you've had? Do you know the name, name Don McAllister? I mean, it sounds familiar, but I can't play. Don it. does. Don has a business called Screencasts Online. It's a um, it's a it's a uh, it's a service where you can get it by boy. You talk about picking the right media. It can be a membership site. He has apps. He has a magazine. He has downloads. He has podcasts. He teaches people how to use um, iOS, um, Apple and Macintosh type things. Hmm. And he teaches it brilliantly. Now, part of it is he's from Liverpool. So the guy could like read the phone book and you'd still be right, fascinated. Exactly. But, but he goes in depth and, and you watch his videos and all this stuff. And you're like, man, did not know that, did not know that, did not know that. Um, Full-time business. He's got a bunch of people helping him out right now. One of my very first episodes was called Profitable po – one of my very first shows was called Profitable Podcasting. And I interviewed him and I, I got to find the audio. It's on one – some hard drive somewhere in this room. But Don's, you know, Paul, I, I don't think I could quit my day job to do this. And, you know, you know Don is doing fine and Don is doing wonderfully so. And, and being able to encourage him back in the day to leverage what it is that he's doing and mm. to do things intelligently and to see a thriving business launch from it, mm. that is exciting. 
Yeah. You know, I went to an event, a guy came up to me and he said, you know, what do you do? I asked, what do you do? And he goes, well, I make preloaded media players for uh, uh, gurus and speakers. I'm like, man, I was talking about that on the show. And he goes, yeah, that's where I got the idea. Wow. You know, you, you launched a business because of my show? Yes. You know, so those are the things I like. When, when businesses are launched, when, when lives are changed, when strategies are, are redirected, yeah. you know, there's that. Now, I'm not saying I owe anything to Don's success. Um, I mean, Don is the type of guy who would have exploded regardless. But the fact of the matter was that I was there at the beginning and kind of helped plant that seed in yeah. his mind. Just just thrills me to no yeah. belief. Yeah. Paul, I appreciate it. Everyone go to the podcast report or paulculligan.com, C-O-L-L-I-G-A-N. Paul, I'm going to miss you at Podcast Movement, but hopefully we'll meet again soon. All right. Appreciate it. Soon. Bye. Between my eyes, walked through the park, came out better on the other side. See, life's like a beach if you find the sand. And right now, I'm feeling like a hundred grand.